Last year at MRF, I got to see the Zero-G Mercury 1.1 Core XY 3D printer at the Fabrica booth and quickly knew that I wanted to build one. This is an open source community project based on the Ender 5 3D printer that can be built on the standard or the larger Ender 5 Plus. This conversion allows you to print much quicker and higher quality parts at a fraction of the cost compared to similar sized Core XY 3D printer builds out there. In December, we started the process of converting a stock Ender 5 Pro to the Mercury 1.1, and since then, we have done much, much more. In today's video, we will be diving into this beast of a printer. We will talk about the project, what the build was like, how it has performed, and future plans. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. With this project, there are really two directions that you can go. The first is to do the Mercury 1.1 conversion. This converts the motion system from Cartesian with roller wheels to Core XY with linear rails. This also includes a new tool head that gets rid of the standard Bowden setup and replaces it with a heavily modified EVA 2.4. This keeps the stock bed and the stock electronics. The other route is to do the Mercury 1.1 conversion, upgrade from the stock bed to a much thicker mix 6 bed, and convert the entire bed system to the three-motored Hydra system. This gives you bed tramming, a much flatter print surface, and possibly a bigger print area, but means that you'll be using very little from the original printer. It can also get pretty pricey depending on what parts you might have and what parts that you need to source. Because there are these two routes that you can take depending on your desired outcome, I want to talk about them separately. Let's start with the Mercury 1.1. For this, you're going to be needing either an Ender 5, Ender 5 Pro, or an Ender 5 Plus. In addition, you need the parts to convert the motion system along with the tool head. On the Zero-G website, there is a very nice bomb that you can use to see every component that you're going to need. This gives you the option to source each part or go with a kit. For my build, Fabrico sponsored the Mercury 1.1 and the Hydra motion system. This kit gives you everything that you need for the motion system, including stainless steel linear rails, aluminum extrusion, honey badger motors, belts, and all of the bolts and nuts in the bomb. What you will still need to source are the parts for the tool head. This includes the heatsink fan, the layer cooling fan, the extruder, and the hot end. The Zero-G website has a very nice configurator that will allow you to select your specific build, which then creates a zip file containing all of the STL files that you'll need to print. For the tool head, you can do anything from the Rapido High Flow with an LGX extruder down to a V6 and BMG. If you're wanting to do this conversion on a budget, then something like a V6 and BMG clone is probably going to be your best bet. I decided to use the Revo 6 I purchased previously along with the Orbiter V2. The probe options available are BL Touch, CR Touch, or Inductive. However, there is an official mod that allows you to use the Clicky Probe, which is what I went with and recommend unless you have other hardware that you want to use. All parts for the build are intended to be printed in ABS and they have the exact same settings as the Voron parts with the exception of the first layer being a 0.25 layer height. As long as you have a printer capable of printing ABS, none of these parts are very large and none of them require any supports. Because the Mercury 1.1 uses the stock frame and electronics, there is much less printing required than in most of the other builds I've done. Once you have all of your printed parts and the hardware needed for the conversion, it's time to start the build. And the beginning process has you stripping off the X and Y motion system of the stock Ender 5 or Ender 5 Plus, along with the stock tool head and Bowden extruder. The assembly process for the new motion system is fairly simple and consists of building the stepper towers, front towers, and XY connectors, along with mounting the linear rails. The most difficult part of the build is that the official instructions are currently a work in progress. The team has been working to create the written guide on the website, which looks great having tons of images and text for every step, but it's not finished. If you were building this today, I would recommend watching the video series put together by Scott from Edge of 3D, which will take you step by step through the build process. I'd also recommend joining the Zero-G Discord, where the team and other community members are more than happy to answer any questions. 
Speaking with the team, I was told that the tweaks being done to the Mercury 1.1 now are small quality of life improvements, and they are getting much, much closer to releasing the step files for the entire printer. This was provided to be early for the live build and will be a welcome reference for new builders. The team is also working on video instructions for assembly, which will be really nice. I watched Scott's entire build series once or twice before even beginning my build, and it helped out a ton. As for the toolhead, it's a modified version of the EVA 2.4. The assembly is fairly straightforward using the CAD available for the 2.4 toolhead, with the main difference being the use of heat inserts. I've been really happy with the toolhead. The 2.4 is a very narrow toolhead, and the use of the trihorn duct does an awesome job of cooling. Although you can run this 3D printer with any firmware, it's primarily intended to be ran with Clipper. Instructions for flashing the mainboard are available through the Clipper config directory, and the main changes I had to make were rotation distance and max temp for the extruder, updating the printer kinematics from Cartesian to Core XY, and inverting stepper direction. I started off doing the Mercury 1.1 conversion, and the only thing I added initially was Turtle Crawler's Trihorn Clicky Probe mod. We've looked at the Clicky a few times on the channel, and it's one of my favorite bed leveling setups for its low cost, repeatability, and cool factor. The performance upgrades you get by doing the Mercury 1.1 motion system and toolhead conversion is awesome, and for most, this will be plenty. For those that want to take it a step further, we have the ability to install the Hydra mod. This is an upgrade for the bed that requires a thicker bed with a specific hole arrangement to attach to the three arms of the Hydra. This system is made up of three stepper motors and lead screws, three long linear rails, and three short ones that allow for the bed to expand and contract. Going with this mod will require either a secondary or beefier controller to accommodate the extra motors, as well as the addition of the Zero-G electronics enclosure. Fabrico did provide a kit for the Hydra along with the bed and its heater. I separately sourced the rest of the electronics and the motors for the Hydra. For the board, I went with the Big Tree Tech Manta M8P and CB1, and for the steppers, I just purchased some generic Creality motors. The cool thing about this large bed and the rails from Fabrico is that it expands your X and Y print volume. The default Ender 5 Pro gives you a 220 X and 220 Y build volume, while with these larger rails and this bigger bed, I get 275 millimeters in X and 270 millimeters in Y. The addition of the Hydra does add quite a bit of cost and time to the build. The main cost again comes from that thicker bed, the bed heater, along with the extra motors and a larger board. As for time, the printed parts of the Hydra and the electronics enclosure are much larger than the ones that come on the Mercury 1.1 motion system and will take a bit longer to print and assemble. The good news is that the instructions for the Hydra are complete and the step files have recently been released making the process fairly straightforward. The biggest issue I had with the Hydra initially when getting it set up was completely self-inflicted. I ended up ordering some of these black aluminum corner brackets to help with stiffening up the frame and in hopes that I can remove these silver ones that came pre-installed on the Ender 5 Pro. What I didn't realize was that the two that I installed in the front were actually bumping into the bearing blocks of the front linear rails on the Hydra. And so when it was creating a mesh or when it was trying to compensate from a mesh, it was doing it incorrectly, which led to the nozzle dragging in into the bed. We had a long stream that was supposed to be just a print and chill, but ended up being a few hours of trying to figure out what was going on. If I had not decided to add those brackets, it would have saved me some hours of headache. Once I got it figured out, the Hydra has been working beautifully and it's doing an awesome job with the clicky of tramming the bed and creating a mesh. The first layers have been super consistent even when printing across the entire build plate. For the electronics enclosure, there are two panels to encase the electronics. Currently, I'm only running the one on the top, but I do plan on eventually adding the second. These panels will require a CNC, laser, or you can use a service like today's sponsor, PCBWay. The vectors for these are available, so using an online service is fairly simple. Printing with the new motion system combined with the 2.4 toolhead has been awesome. This is my first time using both the Orbiter Extruder and the Revo Hotend. Turtle Crawler has been working on profiles for the Mercury printers and Orca Slicer, which is what I've been using with really positive results. I love the slicer, and although some further tuning could still help, the 5K acceleration and 200 millimeters per second print speed has been super consistent. If you want to push things further and you have a high flow hot end, I've seen what these printers are able to do and you can squeeze much more out of them. As for mods, I added the Big Tree Tech ABB36 and U2C, so I'm running CAN bus for the toolhead. I designed a 90 degree 2020 LED mount based on the ones that were on my Voron Switchwire, which I will have linked in the description. 
I removed the Y limit switch to clean up the wiring and I'm using sensorless homing on Y and I'm using the Voron Trident spool holder and reverse Bowden guide to run the filament to the tool head. For future plans, I did pick up a five inch touchscreen that I plan on installing, uh, which will be running Clipper screen. I plan on installing a USB webcam up top to monitor the prints and I would love to enclose this printer. The Zero G team let me know they are currently working on a custom frame for the Mercury 1.1 and Hydra combo that is a beefier frame which will be more rigid and it's designed with the intent of being enclosed. A render of the current progress was shared with me and it looks incredible. When it is officially released, I plan on swapping over from this Creality frame to this new larger frame. This build is one of, if not my absolute favorite 3D printer builds to date, which is partially attributed to the sheer amount of time I put into putting everything together, but it's also because of the level of detail and care that the team has put into this project. In every stream I did building this, they tried to be present to answer any questions that I had or any questions that anybody else had. Prior to starting this build and throughout the entire building process, I spent quite a bit of time posting as well as lurking over on the Zero G Discord. Just about every day I saw the devs there helping others and working to make this project better and more accessible. I have to give a major shout out to Dutch Dude, Turtle Crawler, and Scott from Edge of 3D for answering the countless amount of questions that I have thrown their way over the past three or four months here. If you have an Ender 5 or an Ender 5 Plus that's collecting dust or you can find a refurb, I highly recommend considering the Mercury 1.1 conversion. Even with keeping the stock bed and the electronics, it is a massive overhaul for the printer. Later on, you can always decide to upgrade to the Hydra if that's something you're interested in. However, if you know from the beginning that you're planning on doing both the Mercury 1.1 motion system as well as the Hydra, I would actually recommend holding off until that new larger frame is released. The main reason for this is that the Mercury 1.1 uses a lot of parts from the original printer. However, once you go with the Hydra, the only things you're actually going to be keeping are the frame and the power supply if you even keep the power supply. Due to the Ender 5 frame not being very stiff or square, when I added the Hydra, I got a slight twist in my frame. This doesn't affect print quality, but if I had a better frame, I should be able to get a much tighter range for my mesh. Unless you already have the Ender 5 ready for the full conversion, the new beefier frame that's going to be more rigid and is ready to be enclosed will be a very nice upgrade. And that has been the Mercury 1.1 and Hydra. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. I'm really looking forward to seeing this project continue to evolve and I already feel like both the project as well as the community has grown a ton in just the three or four months that I've been building my printer. For anyone interested, I will have links down below in the description over to the Zero G website, the Zero G Discord, and over to Fabrica where you can check out the different kits for this conversion that they offer. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and if you had heard of the Mercury 1.1 prior to watching this video. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.